Hello there, Audrey Ann here from Live Snap Love, where I help you learn photography quickly and easily so you can beautifully capture the people and moments that matter most. Now, today is part one of a three part series where I'm taking you behind the scenes and giving you a tour of all my camera and photography gear. Now, today we're going to be talking about the camera body and shooting accessories. And then in part two, we're going to move on to discussing all the lenses that I have. And then in part three, we'll talk about the actual camera bags and additional accessories that I maybe don't use that often or the ones that just simply don't fit into a camera bag. So obviously I'd love it if you would subscribe, that way you will stay in the loop and be notified the minute that those next two videos drop, but I'll also link to them in the description underneath this video. Now in the description is also where you'll find links to absolutely everything that I mentioned in this video, along with a link to watch our free photography class pro tricks for professional level photos. In that class, I teach you everything you need to know in order to make sure that you get professional wall worthy images, regardless of the camera gear that you use. So if you're ready, let's dive in now and take a look at what's inside my camera bag. So let's start by looking at the most important piece of photography equipment that you're going to have in your camera bag, which is going to be your camera. And I use the Canon 5D Mark III. Now this is actually quite an old camera. It was released in 2012, which is when I bought mine. And it's actually quite old now in terms of technology. So it's been superseded by the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, and there would be, if they kept on the same cycle that they have done, there would have been a Canon 5D Mark V coming out this year. Whether there is or not, I don't know. They'll maybe switch to a different line, but certainly this is a reasonably old camera, but I still love it. And it is a full frame camera, which means that it has that full, 35 millimeter equivalent sensor. If you're confused about the difference between crop frame and full frame, I will link to a blog post that will teach you more about that in the comments underneath the video, or sorry, the description underneath the video. And it also has a great autofocus system. So that's two things for me that are really important. You know, that I like shooting with a full frame, and I also like to make sure that it has a really good autofocus system involved as well. So I will be upgrading this camera body soon, uh, but I still love it, it still works, and you know, I don't see the point in upgrading gear when you don't need to. The next item that is always in my camera bag and is another essential is your memory cards. Now, memory cards don't seem the most sexy or exciting things to talk about, but they are kind of important because they have two things that you need to be aware of, and that is the write speed and the read speed. Now, the write speed is simply how quickly your camera can write the information from the sensor onto your memory card. The read speed is how quickly your computer will be able to read the information on the memory card. Now, that read part isn't important to me, it might be to you, but for me, that's not important, but the write speed is, because what you'll find if you have a uh, memory card that has a slower write speed, your camera can be rushing to kind of write the data, and if you're taking a lot of pictures in succession, maybe using burst mode, it can't keep up and you'll have to wait till you can take a next image. That's called buffering. It's when basically the camera says, well, hold on, I'm still writing here and it has to kind of catch up. So I always make sure that I have a fast write speed on my memory cards. Now I actually use these CF cards. You'll see they look slightly different from a uh, SD card, they are a little bit bigger. They are meant to be faster to write to, which is why I use them. Just as a side note, if you do have one of them, you are going to need to use something like this, a card reader, so that you have a CF slot because most computers won't have them. So just another thing to keep in mind. The third thing that always is in my camera bag is a spare battery because I've lost kind of the number of times that I used to kind of grab my camera and then realize, you know, I just had small amount of battery left. So I always have two. One is fully charged at all times, and then I just swap them over whenever I need them. Whenever I go out shooting, I always make sure I take the fully charged one with me so I'm fully prepared. 
So the next item in my camera bag is this. It is an Expo Disc, and this is what it looks like. Now this is a white balance tool. It helps you set a custom white balance in camera so that you nail the correct white balance in camera. Now I think that's really important at all times, but it's especially important if you're starting out because it takes a little while for you to be able to see color correctly. And a lot of the time you'll look at the white balance and you won't realize what's wrong with it. Just setting your white balance in camera can be really beneficial. Now, a white balance tool is the only item that we ask that you have for my Auto to Awesome class. Now, we actually say to use a gray card there. A gray card is, you can pick one up from $7 to around $15. They're really cheap, really easy to use. Um, so I recommend that you get one of those. And then if you find you don't want to set your white balance in camera, you've only spent $10. These, however, cost around $50. So they're so much more expensive. But I have one because it's easier to use and I like to set my white balance in camera so I know it's accurate. So that's something that I want to have in my camera bag. Okay, so the next item is a bit of a big one. It does obviously pack down into a circle, but it is, ooh, one of these. It is a reflector and it's a five in one reflector that I use. And that means you have a white side, which is your reflector. And then you have a gold side. And then inside here, when you zip this open, you actually have a black side, a silver side. And then inside here is what is known as a scrim. Now, the type of uh, photography that I do, which is more lifestyle documentary, I wouldn't use one of them for that, obviously. But if I'm shooting portraits, then you'll find that it's really useful for being able to balance out the light and shadow on the face. So, uh, and possibly even for food photography as well, I would use that. So something that you don't have to have, but it is nice to be able to have that in your camera bag. And then if you see lighting on your subject that's wrong, you can actually manipulate the light and get it looking exactly the way that you want it to. And they are around 20 to $25 for one of these. So they're not gonna break the bank and it's great to have in your camera bag. The final thing that I'm going to talk about in this video is the flash unit. Now, I don't, again, use a flash unit very often, but I love to have one because, you know, Christmas morning it is pitch dark in my part of the world at Christmas morning, especially the time we get up, and I can find it really useful for that. Also, if I'm, you know, committed to doing something, uh, maybe sort of event photography or, you know, I'm covering a wedding, I don't really shoot weddings, but if I was doing weddings for a favor or some kind of event, like a 80th birthday party and the lighting is terrible, then I know that I have one of these. Now I do have Canon uh, 430 EX Mark II. This again has been superseded. You'll find that most of my gear is quite old um, by a Mark III. But uh, if I were to buy again, I might not actually go Canon. You can go off brand with these quite easily, so something like a newer or a Vivitar can be just as good as well. I haven't personally used those, I have heard good things about them. So if you want a flash unit and you don't want to fork out quite as much for the Canon own brand, then you can certainly get uh, an off-brand one which will work just as well. So now I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments what camera body you have. And if you're not happy with it, let me know which one you wish that you had. Now, if you're not yet subscribed to our email list, go do it now. Each week I send out an email that will help keep you focused and inspired and keep moving you on to the next stage of your photography journey, regardless of where that is. So once again, thank you so much for being here and I will see you again next week.